As the sun comes up at a farmer's market in Northern Virginia, Calvin Riggleman gets his tent ready for customers. He makes the two-hour drive from West Virginia every Saturday to deliver fruits and vegetables from a farm that's been in his family for five generations. For me, it's 100% of my income is coming to the farmer's market and selling the things that we grow and stuff that I get from other farms. It's vital to my existence and me and my family. Over the years, things haven't changed much on Riggleman's farm, and he doesn't think artificial intelligence will be much different. Me being a small operation, I don't see how AI is going to affect me or help me other than writing a paper um, for a while. But AI is coming to agriculture, and in some places, it's already arrived. Tractors drive themselves. Robots make their way through crops. Herbicide drones know the difference between cash crops and weeds and AI-enabled sprayers can tell farmers how well their fields are performing. Being able to decide what to plant, what crop to plant, what variety of that crop, and what treatments to use on a particular soil, in a particular field, in a particular year, those decisions, to a large extent, are going to be influenced by AI as we go into the future. There's this whole pipeline here where the ears come in. Dr. Pat Schnabel is part of a national partnership of researchers looking at ways artificial intelligence can help improve the efficiency of the nation's farm fields. Schnabel says AI is helping to analyze weather patterns, determine soil moisture, and identify pests and diseases much faster. And that's AI. In this lab at Iowa State University, Schnabel's team is looking at how the environment can impact corn yields data that's becoming more important as farms see more heat and drought. So being able to build varieties using AI to help us breed varieties that are resilient to that change, to dampen the impact of the negative impacts of climate change on agriculture is what really is driving me. In another part of campus, a pair of drones work together. One uses AI to detect weed patterns, and another is able to surgically spray herbicide in just those places that need it. And this is where we can see these scouting drones can scout the field and can see where the damage is happening and how these sprayer drones can go on these specific sites and kill them. So this is where I feel in future AI will be a very handy tool for our farmers. Special cameras mounted on robots roll through fields and capture 3D images of the crops, helping to find signs of disease or nutrient deficiencies. But that's just the beginning. Then more and more in the next five to 10 years, you're gonna see uh, even a significant jump on uh, reasoning and decision making. So once we detect these things, what do we do about it? And can we make a very precise decisions of where to spray chemicals, how much chemical to spray without you know, jeopardizing the biodiversity or the ecosystem, but still taking care of and protecting crops. So that leap uh, would be AI driven and you're gonna see that in within the next five to 10 years. And while corn is of concern, in Iowa, at North Carolina State University, sweet potatoes are paramount. And that is caused by the root knot nematode. Adrian Gurney studies things called nematodes, tiny worms that can wreak havoc on various crops and make an entire harvest unusable. AI-assisted microscopes help Gurney's team find infestation patterns that humans might overlook. We're not going to fully replace the technicians and the diagnosticians who are doing a lot of the, the work with these nematodes, these microscopic worms, but this tool is going to make them better at their jobs and more efficient and take some of the load off. Sprayer tractors are also getting a high-tech upgrade. In this field, an AI camera system works with a supercomputer right on the vehicle. What we do is we run the machine learning models on here and we can immediately give a farmer a map of their field back after they have sprayed it, saying this is how your cover crop performed. Another campus robot lets the team take thousands of high resolution photos of various plants, which will feed AI models that will suggest best growing conditions for those plants. We need to know very precise level of information about where pests are, where fertility insufficiencies are, where every stress across that landscape is. And we've had a hard time doing that in ag. And I think the missing piece of technology has been computer vision, that branch of AI. Um, that will allow us to have that type of maps made at scale very efficiently. 
Much of the work of artificial intelligence in agriculture is still in the research phase at universities, but tech startups, robotic companies, and other entrepreneurs are seeing a rapidly growing market. Right, so we're automating all of that through AI. One of those startups is AgEye, a Raleigh, North Carolina-based company that uses artificial intelligence to completely automate indoor growing. AI can analyze crops and optimize conditions like how much light, water, and nutrients are needed for things like kale, lettuce, strawberries, and tomatoes. What we're using AI for is to look at the actual growth rate of the plants and we base the lighting schedule 14 hours, 16 hours based on the individual plants, right? So we sense that biofeedback of the plants using AI and we dynamically adjust the light. So as you think about a large scale indoor farm, that's massive savings on an annualized basis. Genty says AgEye's operation can run 24 seven without any humans involved, saving tremendous labor costs. We could have the perfect farm 365 days a year. The challenge is how do we improve that? Right, And so we want to leverage AI to really improve not only the, the operations, but also the, the economics. And for many farms, finding ways to save labor costs is a high priority. To help with that, nearly all tractor companies are now developing driverless vehicles. In Livermore, California, Monarch makes electric, driver-optional vehicles that can work in vineyards, orchards, and even dairy farms. So we have CPUs and GPUs, that are running local neural networks. The tractors aim to give farmers real-time data on performance and end-of-day reports. I'm getting automatic insights. You know, I'm uploading the data from all of my crops that I drove past today. And in the cloud, I have an artificial intelligence system that's running an AI algorithm to say, hey, you really should go look at these three things in your farm because they're out of the ordinary. That's really, I think, the big thing that's going to change is how data coming off of the tractor can inform operations and provide actionable insights to, to farmers. As with most AI technology, there are challenges and concerns. For one, how to get farmers who live on very narrow profit margins to embrace investing in new technologies. Every day we are seeing new tools, new apps coming, and farmers have so much things blasted on them. They don't know which one to trust. I think this coming wave of technology, AI and robotics, is much more what we call scale neutral, to where both large and small farmers will have much more equal access and it will make financial sense at both ends of that. Others worry about who owns the massive amount of data that powers artificial intelligence and how to keep that safe. But proponents say the rewards vastly outweigh the risks when it comes to feeding the world's population. AI, like anything else that we have seen before that, even things like uh, calculators, right, like on cell phones, right, it's just another tool that we're introducing to the market, right, and, and people and how they're gonna use it. You hear AI is coming for my job, AI is gonna take over all of the various aspects of, a, of an operation, but I think at the end of the day, AI is just another tool, just like any other technology, properly leveraged could really improve operations within a farm. Back to the Alexandria farmer's market, and Calvin Riggleman of Big Riggs Farm says he's hopeful AI tools could one day help people like him. Yeah, absolutely would be handy. I've seen drones that fly around and take pictures of crops and, and can tell if, it, what, if it's lacking certain, certain minerals or if it's dehydrated. I've seen things like that that I think it would be beneficial. It's gonna take over the world. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it might. <laughs>